Both Judaism and Christianity play important roles in the early history of Islam. As I said, Jews and Christians are there in Arabia. They're interacting with Muhammad. Right? Uh, and so there are uh, particularly positive relationships, and particularly with Christians, that Muhammad has in his early career. So uh, Muhammad, when he's a very young boy, is said to have made a journey with some of his relatives to Syria. And in the process of this journey, they encountered a monk named Bahira, who was a kind of hermit living uh, in, the, uh, in the desert. And when he saw Muhammad, he recognized him as a, a person of future religious significance for his community. Right? He makes a premonition, even though Muhammad's only 12 years old, doesn't become a prophet till he's 40, uh, makes, a, make, makes a prediction that Muhammad will be a, an important spiritual messenger for uh, his people. Once Muhammad becomes, once he first starts to receive the Quranic revelations, he is initially a bit confused about what they are. He's concerned. He's not sure where these revelations are coming from. He's not even entirely sure they're coming from God initially. And he goes to his wife Khadija and he tells her, this is happening to me, I don't know about this. And she says, don't worry, I'm going to go ask my cousin Wadaka. He's a Christian and he knows the scriptures well. And she brings Muhammad to her cousin Wadaka, and Wadaka the Christian again confirms that Muhammad is a person of spiritual destiny. Right? A person who is... Um, I, I don't think he uses the word prophet, but a special person spiritually for his people. And finally, when Muslims are being persecuted in Mecca, a particular group of Muslims who are vulnerable to persecution because of their social status uh, in Mecca, Muhammad has them flee Mecca and go to Abyssinia, which is present-day Ethiopia, right, across the Red Sea into East Africa. And the ruler of Abyssinia at that time is a Christian king called the Negus. And he takes in the Muslims. And then some Meccans find out, who are the persecutors, find out that these people have fled. And they go to the king and they say to him, give us these people back. They're renegades from our community. And the king says, no because I recognize in their religion something that's very close to my religion. And I will protect them, and I will not give them back to you. Right? And those Muslims remain in Abyssinia till nearly the very end of Muhammad's life, when they finally come and join him in Medina. Right? So we have three Christians who play fundamental roles in Muhammad's life. One identifies him as a prophet as a young boy. The other confirms the that the revelations he's receiving come from God. And the third takes in early Muslims and protects them on religious grounds. Right? So you have these uh, very important early connections. Um, in the year 619, when Muhammad is uh, in a very bad situation, in Mecca at that time, facing tremendous persecution. He has a miraculous event that occurs to him, a miraculous uh, trip that he takes to Jerusalem, referred to as the night journey and ascension. I'm not sure I'm spelling that correctly. I'm very tired. Okay, uh, so the night journey and ascension. So what happens is uh, Muhammad is, uh, 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 meets the angel Gabriel in Mecca, or in the area around the Kaaba, and he miraculously takes Muhammad, it's said, from Mecca to Jerusalem, to the site of the ancient temple. Now remember that the temple, the ancient Jewish temple in Jerusalem, was in rubble at this time, right? It had been destroyed by the Romans. It was never rebuilt by the Christians. But Muhammad is said to have been taken from, uh, Mecca, uh, from Mecca uh, to Jerusalem in a single night. And this is rec recounted in this verse of the Quran. Glory be to him who carried his servant by night from the sacred mosque, that is uh, the, the, the area around the Kaaba in Mecca, to the farthest mosque. In Arabic, the farthest mosque here is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, 
which is the name of the mosque in Jerusalem across from the Dome of the Rock. All right. So uh, takes his servant by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque that is in Jerusalem, whose precincts we have blessed. Right? So Jerusalem is a blessed city that we might show him some of our signs. And when Muhammad gets to the temple, that, what the site, it said, of the Holy of Holies in the temple, he, is then, he then ascends from that point up through the seven levels of heaven and comes in contact with God himself. But along the way, he meets Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Joseph and all of these prophets that are mentioned in the Quran. Not all of the ones who are mentioned, but various prophets that are mentioned in the Quran that are also important Jewish and Christian figures. And he returns back to Mecca, and he knows at this point that he is part of a fraternity of prophets that include these important Jewish and Christian figures. That even though he's from Mecca, and in Mecca is the Kaaba, that you also have this other site of Jerusalem, which is sacred now for Muslims. When Muhammad comes back from the night journey, he instructs his followers that they must pray in the direction of Jerusalem. Who else prays in the direction of Jerusalem? Jews, and originally Christians too, prayed in the direction of Jerusalem. So for a period of about four years, five years, Muhammad and his followers pray in the direction of Jerusalem. Okay. Um, eventually, Muhammad will go from Mecca to Medina when he faces great persecution. And I won't tell you the whole story at this point. But one of the things that attracted Muhammad to Medina, one of the things that made him think this was a good place for him to go, is you had three Jewish clans that were resident in Medina. And Muhammad is certain that those Jewish clans will become his allies. And for a while they are, but it doesn't last long. But when he gets to, when he gets to Medina, uh, he and his followers over the next several years write the constitution sorry, of Medina. This is a document that recognizes Jews as their own distinct religious group, Muslims as their own distinct religious group, and Jews and Christians together as a group of people residing in a common land with a common interest in protecting that land. 